Hello and welcome to ICT for Ag 2020. My name is Shmaila Ashraf and I, along with my colleague, Ceci Burns, are going to be guiding you through the next 16 hours of sessions, engagement, and excitement. We are so happy that you all are here. Now, just so you all know, we're starting a little bit early, but that's because we really just wanted to take this chance to get to know everyone that's joining us, where you're coming from, who you are, uh, what morning beverage you might be drinking, um, and talk you through a little bit of Whova and what our virtual convention will look like. So Ceci, why don't you kick it off by leading us into ICT for Ag? Thank you so much, Shamila. I'm so happy to be here. Um, even though it may be 1.45 in the morning DC time, um, that is where both Shamila and I are right now. So just feel free to throw in the chat, where are you joining from this morning or this evening or midday, wherever you might be. We know that we have all over the day, all over the world. We're so happy to have you here from wherever you're joining from. Uh, it's gonna be 16 hours of jam-packed content. We're really, really excited to have you here. But um, one thing that we're gonna talk a little bit about now is like how you actually do the conference thing. Uh, so there's obviously streams that you'll be able to watch, but then what else can you do? Shamila? Oh, so, so much. So you're all joining us from a virtual platform called Whova. That is the pronunciation, Whova. <laughs> Up for debate. Um, so on Whova, you have opportunities to engage with your peers, ask questions in our session chats, and of course, stream and play back sessions after the fact. So we'll go through each of those a little bit um, step by step. The first, and I think the most exciting part for me, is the fact that you can message every single attendee at this. Um, yeah. It's awesome. It's so cool, Shamila. I mean, I've gotten so many emails so far about people getting into the Whova platform and chatting back and forth already like a week before the conference started. So I know that that's the thing that people really love the most. I mean, I think we all really miss meeting up with folks in person, getting to network, getting to just like mix it up. And so this is your chance to virtually mix it up, send a message, um, try and meet somebody at a session, uh, set up a time to video chat, all of those things through the- Post an icebreaker if you're using- Oh them. yeah, post an icebreaker in there too. There's all kinds of great ways to connect with people. Um, my personal favorite is engaging in the session chats. So what's really cool is that your speakers are gonna be there live to be answering all of your questions in the session chat. Maybe you're the type of person who, when you're at a live conference, you don't really want to stand up and ask a question. You know, you're not big on that, but it's a lot easier to ask a question via the chat. Just a quick, quick message and the speaker will be there, be able to respond. Um, you'll be able to ask your fellow attendees what they're thinking about the session, all of that. So all of those are really great options. Um, I feel like I'm missing something. Is there something else, Shamila, in terms of engagement? Um, well, we've talked about our one-on-one -on -one messaging. We've talked about our session chats. And the third part is, of course, being able to talk on the community board. Of course. The best. <laughs> the best. Community boards, discussion boards, topic boards, whatever you want to call them. Um, if you go onto your Whova app and onto your desktop browser, you should be able to access all of our different community boards. You can even make your own topics. Um, you can see what people want to talk about. And the favorite part for me of, of looking through all those community boards is just seeing all of the topics that come up uh, because it really does show me like, hey, there are so many other people that want to talk about this and, and want to engage with it. Um, so make sure to check out those community boards. They stay active through the entire event. Yep. It's a great way to really lead the discussion, right? So we have all of these great presenters speaking on the things that are meaningful to them. But if there's something missing, if you want to dive deeper into something, um, you can really guide that conversation. You can invite people in to have that conversation with you. It's a great opportunity. Um, yeah. I want to 
maybe pause and say hey to anybody who's joined us in the last four or five minutes. Welcome to ICT for Ag. We're so happy that you're here. Throw a message in the chat. Let us know where you're joining from. I'm joining from Washington, D.C., where it is 1.49 in the morning. Uh, I'm Ceci Burns, and this is my colleague. Hi, everyone. I am Shmaila Ashraf, also in Washington, D.C. Um, also not sure what time of the day it is at this point. <laughs> but that actually leads us to a, a great point. So um, one thing that, that you'll see in our, in our sessions coming up is that we're really interested to know and hear from you all. So one of those things that we want to know is what's the favorite morning beverage you like to drink, or maybe middle of the night beverage, um, especially if you're Sessie and I. <laughs> we both have coffee. Um, and I know for me, I drink coffee uh, too, far too much, actually, at this point. Um, Sessie even knows this working with me. I have gotten to a point where I got excited about cutting my coffee down to three cups a day. Um, but other than that, I'd love to hear in the Whova chat, what, what are you all sipping on right now? Oh my gosh. And then we have such a great set of uh, content for you here in that first social session, talking about coffee, about tea, about tea with milk, about all of the different options and ways to drink coffee or tea. We have a, we're going to hear from people who don't like either of those two things. Um, and we're just going to look a little bit of, at uh, what those, those coffee and tea crops mean globally. Um, so it's a great little way to wake up to our 16 hour ICT for Ag Day. And uh, we're just so happy to have you for that. So for people joining just now, we've outlined a few different ways to engage. Um, we'll kind of spin through those again for you. Um, and if you joined right at 1.45 or where, whatever time that is, feel free to take this moment to go grab a glass of water before we get started. But um, the three ways that, that we're talking about are one-on-one -on -one messaging, jumping in the session chat, and getting on those community boards. So Shamila, pick your favorite. Um, I love the one-on-one -on -one messaging. I always talk about it. Um, so you have the ability to message any participant at ICT for Ag. It's, it's the equivalent of going up to someone um, at, the co at a conference and saying, hey, what's your name? Scary, and name but less scary because it's just a chat. Just a chat, yes. Um, so feel free to, to message any of the attendees that, that you run into. You can exchange um, information with them, you know, ask them what they're thinking of the conference. Um, and then also on the mobile app, um, if you've downloaded Whova, you can post an icebreaker so people can really get to know you and they've got some fun questions in there. I'm going to post my icebreaker as soon as we get off this. Same here. <laughs> so so you, want to, you want to talk a little bit maybe about, um, I hope everyone's using the session chat right now, but maybe let's talk a little bit about those community boards again. Oh yeah, the community boards, uh, which I can't believe I almost forgot earlier. They're just the best. They're your opportunity as attendees to drive the conversation, to tell us what you want to talk about and talk to your fellow attendees and speakers um, about those issues. So um, we have 16 jam-packed hours, but that's still not enough time to talk about all of the awesome things happening in ICT for Ag. Um, you know, maybe you really want to go super, super deep on, you know, uh, geospatial imaging layers for insurance products in Cote d'Ivoire. We don't have a session specifically on that, but you can find some folks to talk about that with in the community boards. Yeah. And another, another great, um, as we're talking about how to use Whova and, and making sure you all feel comfortable with that, another great thing that you can do is actually set virtual meetups. So yeah. you don't have to just watch the sessions. You don't just have to chat with others. You can actually create a hangout um, and you can do this in the community board space um, and, and set up a time attendees can come in, you can use the Whova video conferencing, or you can set your own Zoom or WebEx or Google Hangout link and attach it in. So make sure to do that. I'm sure it'll be great for you all to see some faces other than mine and Ceci's. <laughs> yes. Um, 
And actually, this is a great segue into a question that we get a lot about Kuva. It's available on your phone and on the web. Is there a difference between these two? Um, so uh, mostly no. Feel free to join via your phone or the web. You're basically going to get the same experience. Um, if you join via your phone, you're going to get a few extra networking opportunities. And then if you join via the web, you're just going to be able to see the sessions bigger and more clearly. So what we recommend is having both open, watching the sessions on your computer, um, being able to participate in the chat there, and then reaching out one-on-one -on -one and perusing the attendees through your, your mobile app. So uh, both options are great. Yeah. So that's enough Hoova shop talk, Desi. I, I, I want to hear from our attendees. Um, so it would be really great to hear from you all in, the, in our chat right here. Uh, what are you most looking forward to in the next 16 hours? What, what are you excited about? Is there a session you really want to go to? Is there um, an organization you want to you uh, reach out to and, and, and hopefully network with? Um, what is it that excites you? And I know for me, um, working on this with our team here and with the folks at Feed the Future and DAI, it's just been um, endless video calls, <laughs> a lot of planning. Uh, but the most exciting part for me is just being able to build a space where all of us can connect with one another. Ceci, what's, what's, what are you looking forward to? Oh my goodness, so many things. I mean, I think we're starting out with a real bang here it, with the, the initial social hour. Um, we have so much fun, um, fun information from our speakers, from our, um, our, our leaders in ICT for Ag, and, and out from the field too, all about coffee and tea. I think, you know, for me, uh, from my background and experience in working in the field and directly with farmers, I'm so, so proud and excited to have our farmer session later on in the conference. Yeah. We're going to hear directly from the farmers that we're talking about these technologies for. And so um, for me, that's just like a magical thing to include in something like this. Um, what else? I'm, I'm really looking to all of the, all of the different responses that people have, have done for COVID-19, obviously, um, why we're joining via Zoom and why we're not sitting on the same couch and why all of these things. Um, mm -hmm. So it's really interesting to me to, to see all of the ways that our, our tech companies and our implementing partners and our, you know, the nonprofit and governmental organizations all around the world have pivoted largely with the use of, of digital solutions for this current COVID crisis. And so you'll hear that throughout the keynotes as well as in the sessions themselves, because that's, that's our new reality. And so i um, super, super excited for that. Yeah. yeah. You keep uh, letting us know what you're excited about. And while we're on the topic of 16 hours, which I've got a lot of cold brew to get me through, um, a couple of things that you all should know for the next 16 hours. If you're just joining us, welcome. If you watch this later in a couple hours, uh, we're happy to have you. Um, well, a couple important things. The first is all of our sessions will be available to play back after it's gone live. So if you miss something and you really want to see it, don't worry, just click back into the session and you'll be able to watch the video. Another important thing to remember about this a uh, 16 hour event is that you don't have to be here for the whole duration of it. Feel free to pop in for the segments that you're really interested in, network, take some breaks, take care of yourself. Uh, Ceci and I and our team will be here the whole time to greet you and, and say hi and chat with you, um, but you all should definitely make sure that you're taking time for yourselves. Oh, that's motion sensing lights that just went off there. <laughs> We are live, so anything can happen, you know? Anything can happen. Anything this can happen. is actually a great lead into um, anything can happen. The motion sensing lights can go off. Um, someone's Wi-Fi can go down. Uh, a stream might stop in the middle of playback. Um, our team has worked really hard to make sure that those things don't happen. But if they do, please be patient with us. We're working on it. Um, and please make sure to use both the organizers announcements uh, discussion board and also message any of your organizers. We all have a little tab on our Whova attendee called organizers. So you can reach out to us and, and we'll be there. 
Um, I'm going to let the light stay off because I actually don't mind it, although I do notice I've got double shadows happening. <laughs> Triple Shamila going on right now. Yes. So. <laughs> you can never have enough sham. That's all I'll say. Um, it also kind of looks like an elephant. Like I'm, <laughs> <laughs> I'm I want to point out that we are one minute away from our official mm -hmm actual go live time so thank you for everybody that's joined us a few minutes early to get settled to figure out how they how they want to sit in their living room or office or maybe you're watching from bed which is okay too um maybe you're still in your pajamas maybe you don't take off your pajamas today we fully support all of that um a couple more things. So Ceci and I are here throughout the day. You're going to see our faces a lot. Um, you're going to see us in a lot of a lot of sessions and sometimes popping up to tell you a couple jokes or I don't know, do something silly. Um, so good jokes too. Always good jokes. I, I think my jokes get funnier as we get later slash earlier into into the day. So just just keep that in mind. There might be some some puns coming at you about agriculture soon. Um, but yeah, we'll be here. We'll be here throughout the 16 hours. So um, make sure to to kind of message us. We're we're always available. We'd love to chat with you all, and our team's also here to chat with you. And now we are officially live in Woo! official 2 a.m. DC start. So <laughs> welcome to ICT for Ag 2020 to everybody that's joined us in the last couple of minutes. We are so, so happy to have you. We are so excited for the next 16 hours. Um, we have so much coming for you. Yeah. So as we have a question for you, being the, the conference designer and kind of the, the person behind the scenes on this, what's been your favorite part or kind of your favorite thing about putting putting all this together? You know, I'm a people person. I don't know if you know this about me. Um, <laughs> I get a lot of energy from being around people. And so it's been really hard during um, this pandemic to be so limited. You know, I love the people that are in my pod, but I miss the people outside of my pod too. And especially my work colleagues all around the world who I'm used to bumping into at different things and, mm -hmm. and connecting with. And um, I think it's just been awesome to see how excited people are to make these connections meaningful and, and important even when they're virtual. And so I'm just really excited to learn with all of my global colleagues about what what makes meaningful virtual interaction and how do we make this better every time and how do we then um, lean into the accessibility. I mean, having a virtual conference makes this so much more available to um, so many more colleagues in, um, in places where we usually don't get to go visit. And um, so we're just really, really happy to have you here. Um, whether you would have been here at ICT for Ag in person um, or whether you're totally new to ICT for Ag in general. So that that's really been the most awesome part um, yeah. of the whole yeah. thing. That's awesome. Um, my favorite, just really quickly before we head into our first social session for the day, uh, my favorite has been building, as we're all figuring out how to work in a virtual world, I think, um, like you said, like that that person to person context been missing, um, but being able to build a space in which people can still connect um, and connect on topics that they care about and, and you know, have that little glimpse of, of hope or excitement or energy when you hear about a new idea or, or working on a new challenge for people at a conference like being able to make that virtual has been such a rewarding, rewarding thing to work on. Um, so we're very happy to have you all here. We're about to wrap up and guide you into our first social session, which will be starting shortly. As a reminder, engage on the chats, message one another, start those discussion boards, um, and we will be here to greet you throughout the next 16 hours. Thank you so much, and we're looking forward to introducing you to our first social hour about chai, tea, coffee, 
and all you wake up huh i said whatever helps you wake up yes if you're just drinking water kudos to you i don't know how you do it <laughs> oh yeah well we're about to about to enter that session so so thank you all and we'll be here to chat with you and in the meantime sassy cheers to starting ict for ag cheers see you, <laughs> see you for 16 hours Oh, yes. <laughs> Take care, everyone. We'll see you soon. Welcome to ICT for Ag. Welcome to ICT for Ag. We're so happy you're here with us virtually. I'm so glad that we have partners from around the world here with us, and I'm so interested in learning about what's going on on the ground. I'm excited to hear from all of our great speakers, especially people coming from the field who can tell us how they've navigated their work in these interesting and strange COVID times that we live in and what kind of innovations they brought to the space. I'm most looking forward to ICT Voyages to bring the different to exchange ideas, knowledges, and also even embrace the failures and to learn from the uh, lessons learned from each other. So this is a way actually, I think for all of us, we are sort of like beginners at this ICT for agriculture and the food sector. So it is a good, uh, the ICT for Ag provide a good platform for us to learn from each other and exchange the knowledges and the practices. This is the most part I really looking forward to participate and also to learn from others. Yeah. Thank you for joining our social session on morning beverages. For some of you, it might be quite early in the morning or maybe late, late at night. If you're like me, you might be making a cup of coffee or tea just to stay awake right now. Let's take a look at our speakers and see what kinds of beverages they like to have in the morning. I drink coffee first thing in the morning. Uh, I have coffee beans from all over Africa. You'll want to come and try our espresso machine. And I'm so proud of my coffee. Okay, my favorite morning beverage is Definitely coffee, um, actually more like milk with coffee. And I think the best milk with coffee beverage I've ever had, and maybe it really wasn't milk with coffee, was in Nepal. My morning beverage of choice is always coffee. I can remember being six years old and begging my parents to have just a little tiny sip. Um, this might be just uh, built in to my jeans because I am Finnish. And fun fact, Finns drank more coffee per capita than anyone else in the world. I think it's over 26 pounds a year. And they have very consistently held that spot. So you might be familiar with Fika in Sweden, but actually Finns do it better. So, um Hi everyone, uh, I enjoy uh, chai in the morning, which is, you know, the Indian loose leaf tea and I put lots of ginger and cardamom in it and it wakes me up. I have to have coffee in the morning. I naively tried to give it up for 30 days and gave up a few hours in. I can have it dark if it's really good, otherwise I usually use uh, vanilla soy milk with my coffee. Um, fun fact, I live in Santiago, Chile, nearly 2,000 miles away from Brazil, the top coffee producer in the world. It has been the top coffee producer since the 1840s. It has not lost that spot. Um, that's it. I have to have my coffee in the morning. Le matin, j'aime souvent vraiment prendre du thé avec le lait de soja. Et je suis content de travailler dans les chaînes de valeur de soja, mais mes enfants n'aiment pas. C'est trop compliqué, mais moi j'aime beaucoup prendre le thé avec le lait de soja. Et voilà, peut-être que c'est l'expérience avec ma mère 
et c'est difficile avec mes enfants. Hein? Uh, so I'm a big coffee drinker and I typically have at least one French press, if not two in the morning. So I definitely need that caffeine to get going. I have a three month old at home. Um, so a strong cup of coffee is a really important part of my day to get things going. <laughs> I try to drink water, more water, like in the morning, the, like uh, in the evening, but, uh, but chai is the best. Like for the morning is like black tea. <laughs> Uh, chai is in Uzbek the same. Uzbek uh, uh, tea is chai. So uh, black, black, hot black tea in the morning wakes me up, definitely. Then, then water like in la in lunch during lunch and. So I am not particularly loyal to any morning beverage. Um, having just recently graduated from my master's program, I was someone who had to chug a lot of coffee in the morning. But I think I may have overdone it because in the later uh, semesters and following graduation, I became very sensitive to caffeine. So these days I try to stay away from coffee as much as I can in the morning and try a lot of different beverages. Sometimes I will have a matcha latte in the morning, which is made with matcha green tea, um, or I'll make some hot chocolate and try to experiment with different uh, flavors. So instead of just using um, raw cacao, I'll also include things like maca powder or cinnamon or anything to kind of make it interesting. And something that I've been really enjoying recently um, is a product from a brand called Ticino that makes a tea that kind of tastes like coffee using chicory from India. Um, so it's a great way to still get that roasty coffee flavor without the caffeine, which I, for some reason, can't handle anymore. As you can see from our participants, a lot of people, myself included, like to have coffee in the morning. There's so many ways of preparing coffee, but how does our coffee get to us? Morning beverages around the world. Coffee beans are usually seeds of the coffee plant. These seeds are dried and ground into the coffee that we drink. Coffee begins in shaded nurseries like the one pictured here. It takes the coffee plant three to four years to produce fruit. These cherries are harvested for the coffee beans inside. After the beans are harvested, they are dried in the sun or in tumblers so they can be stored and processed. Drying coffee in the sun can take anywhere from 6 to 14 days. After that, seeds finish drying in a mechanical dryer. Our coffee beans are still not done yet. Did you know that coffee beans are green when they're harvested? During the roasting process, the beans turn brown once reaching an internal temperature of 400 Fahrenheit. The coffee beans are then ground to make coffee. Timing, water levels, and many other factors in this step can enhance the flavor of the coffee. Now our coffee is ready to be brewed and shared with people all over the world. There are over 2.25 billion cups of coffee consumed every day. Let's see if any of our speakers and attendees are part of the many people in the world who drink coffee daily. <laughs> I want to go next because I fear the Ugandans may say tea is their favorite. <laughs> <laughs> because the Kenya makes the best tea. <laughs> I have a Ugandan colleague who says their tea is the best. So I just want to clear that, that um, I have a tea in the morning and Kenyan tea is the best tea in Africa, in the world. <laughs> you go to different places, different continents. So my favorite beverage in the morning, is I'm, I'm somewhat an English girl at heart, so I drink very much, much of a dark milky tea is my thing in the morning to go for. This is a normal, basic black Ceylon tea, so great for me. And once I have once I have that, I feel like my day has begun, and that keeps me safe. Even now during the COVID time, I keep a cup of tea by me literally all day. Just make me feel. It just makes me feel better to have a sip of tea. A Seattle lights are coffee, <laughs> coffee, coffee. Um, do you take cream in your coffee, Connor? No. Only if it's a bad coffee. Very true. Do you take it um, iced or hot? Uh, depends on, well, in the morning it's always hot if I'm making it at home, but I, although I'm mostly a coffee snob, I'm a big fan of Duncan's iced coffee. So I 
grew up drinking tea mainly, and I didn't really get into coffee until I moved away from home. Um, usually I like Tango Weezy tea from Kenya, um, but when I am away from home, I stick to plain black coffee or an Americano, um, but usually just... So my morning drink is usually tea with milk and some sugar. So the first two. Um, so my favorite morning beverage, most of the time I just have water, but occasionally I do enjoy iced coffee. Um, with, with either like soy milk or almond milk? Oh, for, for, for Kenyans, um, and I guess a number of Africans, we like tea uh, and milk, oh, that's uh, white tea, in a that's ratio of okay. one to one. We don't stain our tea like uh, probably you guys do or the, the Europeans do. I see them staining, putting a little milk and, uh, and a lot of water. We, the more milk it has, the better for, for us. We like it that way. So, <laughs> so it's one to one. Or um, if you want it better still, more milk than water, then uh, tea leaves. So we brew it um, most of the time. It tastes much better when it's brewed. You know, you put uh, water, it boils together with the tea leaves, then you add milk, then leave it to, to, to boil a bit, then you sieve it and you can take with the salt, uh, sorry, <laughs> sugar or no sugar, but most of the time we, we put sugar and lots of it as a teaspoon can almost stand in it. Perfect, perfect. <laughs> that sounds good. I, I agree. I, I, um, I'm going to try, I wonder, I'm going to try brewing it with milk. Is that what, that's how you do? I'm going to, sorry, I think you're muted. <laughs> oh, sorry, sorry. Uh, you said, how do you do with the oat milk? Oh, can I, I'm going to, I said, can I try brewing it with milk with the kettle that I have? Like, oh, just yeah. that sounds really good. <laughs> yeah, but you need to boil the water and the tea leaves separate so that it boils and boils. Oh, okay. Okay. Then, okay. then, uh, oh, sorry, not separate, but fast if you want to uh, brew it. Yeah. And then uh, we don't typically do it in a kettle. <laughs> we do it in a sufuria. <laughs> Oh, okay. so, you, so I'm already imagining your coffee maker. That's not how we do it. <laughs> you have to put water in a, a sufuria in a container, it boils, then put a teaspoon, two spoons in there and let it boil. Then now add water in that sufuria, then now get it off and sieve it to a kettle okay. or something else. <laughs> so it's not a typical tea okay. making. I see what you mean. <laughs> Okay, I'm with you. <laughs> it was interesting. Okay, my morning beverage of choice is uh, tea with uh, milk and honey. A lot of our participants prefer to drink tea instead of coffee in the morning. But what is tea and how is it different from coffee? Tea is any beverage made from stewing leaves of the Camellia sinensis plant in water. Although there are many kinds of teas, they all come from the same plant. Camellia sinensis, or tea plants, are native to East Asia, where tea was first discovered in ancient times. Today, however, tea is grown all over the world in small gardens to large spalling farms like the one pictured here. The best tea is grown at a higher and steeper elevation. Because of the difficult terrain, these leaves are picked by hand, which can be quite the fit considering that it takes around 2,000 tea leaves to make just one pound of tea. Different types of teas are made by infusing other herbs, flowers, and essence to tea leaves. Floral teas like these are made by binding tea leaves and flower bulbs together. The famous Earl Grey tea gets its unique taste from the addition of oil from bagamont oranges. Since its discovery in 2737 BCE, tea has evolved into many colors, flavors, and forms, with every with the addition of many cultures and people who have embraced it. Today, tea is the most widely consumed beverage in the world after water. From iced tea to green tea lattes and bubble tea, tea is an incredibly versatile beverage. 
Why don't we dive into some quick tea recipes that you can make from the comfort of your home? This is the recipe for one of my favorite hot teas, Middle Eastern Sage Tea. Each country in the Middle East has their own version of this tea. This recipe is from my Arabic teacher, who I personally think makes the best one. The tea is very relaxing and soothing, and it actually doesn't come from the tea plant. It's completely made with sage herbs. That makes it technically an herbal tea rather than a traditional tea. But tea has changed so much in these past thousands of years that this is no less than any other tea. For this tea, you begin by boiling water. Um, once the water is hot, you actually continue the cooking process in a teapot like one of these here. This teapot has a separate compartment for the sage leaves. I'm using dried sage leaves, but fresh sage leaves work just as well. Sage has a very wonderful earthy aroma, and it has lots of calming and relaxing properties, so it's perfect for a nighttime tea because it doesn't have caffeine, but it has this essence that puts you right to sleep. Which is probably why our teacher would prefer to give us the tea at the end of the lesson rather than the beginning. Once the teapot is ready, I pour in the hot water and put on the lid to let the sage leaves brew inside of the water. You can brew this tea from anywhere from 5 minutes to an hour. I like watching the color of the sage leaves change the tea. Once the tea is a bit darkened, you can pour it into one of these traditional Middle Eastern tea sets. This tea set was a gift from our Yemeni neighbor who also gave us her recipe for Yemeni coffee. It's amazing to see how many cultures and traditions have come out of tea making, from the chai tea that we usually have in our desi family to the Yemeni coffee that our neighbors used to make for us and even this Arabic sage tea that my Qatari Arabic teacher made for me. Tea has this unique way of bringing people and cultures together. Drinking tea is almost as good as sharing tea. In our family, each one of my sisters makes tea on a different night. My sister Sophia made tea for us yesterday, so today it's my turn to treat her with a cup. My favorite, my favorite beverage, it's also just, I love coffee. I, uh, so here in Renee talk about the Guatemalan coffee makes me really excited because I do really, really want to try coffee from Guatemala, specifically in Guatemala, but I love just a hot cup of coffee. I definitely lean towards hot coffee and it's just so, just like drinking it is just so nice and just warming. I'm a morning coffee person and even though it's getting colder here in DC, I'm still on my iced coffee kick. So I've just ground a combination of caffeine and decaf beans. These are fair trade from Guatemala. These, I don't know specifically where they're from, but they're from the Americas, both roasted locally. So I make cold brew in a French press, pour the water in, and then I just let it sit for eight hours, and then it's ready to go, and I always top off my coffee with better half, which is half coconut cream and almond milk as a creamer. <coughs> to start your tea, boil some water in a saucepan. Many people microwave their water, but for truly authentic desi tea, you have to boil your water on the stove top. I like to heat my water on a high heat just to get it boiling. After you get it boiling, you can lower the temperature but this is the faster way to do it. You can add as much milk as you like, um, but you have to add milk, any type, um, organic milk, regular milk, soy milk, it just has to be milk. After making these teas for a few years, I can kind of eyeball it, but if you wanna be more precise, you can pour your water and your milk into a teacup first just to get the levels right, and then pour it into the teapot or the kettle. While the tea is boiling, I like to get my spices ready. 
Different people use different combinations of spices, but here's my personal blend. I like to add some turmeric, some cardamom, some clove, and a little bit of ginger. Oh, sorry, not ginger, cinnamon. Um, some people add ginger as well. And of course, loose leaf tea. Um, tea bags can be used, but for the most traditional and authentic tea, you want to use loose leaf tea. You can buy it pre-mixed at the store with some spices as well. This blend has some black pepper in it and long pepper, as well as some nutmeg. Once the water-milk combination gets a little bit hot, I like to add in my turmeric. In Desi culture, turmeric milk is actually considered very cleansing and purifying. So a lot of people like to have a glass of turmeric milk at night. I like to add my turmeric to my tea just so I can have both of them at the same time. So I like to add just a little bit. If you add too much, you might get a stronger turmeric flavor. A lot of people might like that, but I'm not the biggest fan of turmeric. It's definitely an acquired taste. The tea is close to boiling, so I'm going to reduce the heat a little bit, just so it doesn't overflow. Now I'm going to go back and add my spices. So I'm making about two cups of tea, so I'll add in a few pods of cardamom. After the cardamom, I like to add a little bit of clove. And after that, a stick of cinnamon. And then I just give it a little stir. I'm waiting to add my tea because first I want these spices to release their flavor a little bit as the tea is cooking. So now that my spices are in, I'm just going to raise the heat just a little bit. Once the tea starts to bubble, I like to add in my loose leaf tea. I'm adding in two teaspoons of ground tea. Oops, it's about to boil over. That's also something you have to watch out for. As soon as you add in the milk, this kind of becomes a liability. It's kind of an accident waiting to happen, but it's still worth it. I'm putting my tea back on the kettle and it's almost done. Now it's starting to get more of that traditional brown color that you associated with chai. For the final step, you'll need to use a strainer to strain out the spices and loose leaf tea. I like to do this in the sink just so I don't get turmeric everywhere. After this step, your tea is ready to be enjoyed. A lot of people start their day with chai, but in our house, we like to have our chai in the evenings after dinner. We all grab our own cup of chai and sit down for a little bit of chai and discuss family time. You can add sugar to your chai, but I like to have mine without any sugar. All right, so here we've got beans, which you should keep in a uh, not clear container and in the dark so that they last longer. Um, We've got our espresso machine. Um, I like to have uh, four shots of espresso with a little bit of steamed uh, milk, just a little foam on top every morning. Um, and sometimes if I'm really, really feeling it, I'll make an entire latte. Um, I'm from Costa Rica. So this is a coffee producer. So I, I, um, the first thing that I drink in the morning is coffee. Um, there are several ways to, to make that coffee. The way that I like it is um, we have like a, like we call a coffee soak. 
um, the coffee sock is the coffee sock of the house, okay? So you just wash it, it's brown, and then you put the, the coffee inside and then you brew it and it's sort of like a, a brewed coffee that the most traditional one. I love it like that. <laughs> My wife doesn't like the coffee in the sock. So what we have is a, a French press right now that, um, that, uh, that we got. Um, yeah, it's a metal one because it breaks very fast, you know. So I got I got a metal one, so it never it never it never breaks anymore because if you know if we I break the coffee, uh, the coffee press, then we go to the sock and it's not a good idea for for the house. So so um I am yes coffee um different kinds from different places. Um, I try coffees in many places. I, I live in Kenya for 15 years, so I love Kenyan coffee, very bitter. Ethiopian coffee, very good as well, both bitter. Here in Costa Rica, the coffee is not as bitter, but um, it's for me, coffee. That's, I'm happy with it. <laughs> That's what I have. <laughs> yeah. I love that. I've never heard of the coffee sock, and I love that. I can't believe it. Yes. What I don't have literally one, just a, a sock. Rich one, but, uh, it's an but, actual um, sock. It is. We call it a coffee sock. I th that I think um, this is not Costa Rican per se. I think this come from Chinese because oh, I remember okay. once I went to um to a camp. I, I did some camping in the in the middle of Kenya. Um, it was, it was a safari, and then uh, one of my friends was from China, and then he came with a sock, but it was more. You know, a different way, but it was a sock, you know. Well, sock wow. is like a piece of cloth. Yeah, you yeah. You close a coffee and then you brew it. We call it a coffee sock. But I think maybe maybe came from, from China. But that is the most traditional way. It's like um, that you, you, if you go to a traditional restaurant in Costa Rica, they, you want a coffee, so they bring the, a small thing with a the sock, they put the coffee, and then you pour it yourself. So the coffee filters in the sock, and then you have your coffee. And that's for my, my, my mother did it. Then my grandmother did it, my mother. But then and right now you have press and, or coffee makers and so on. But the, the coffee sock is... I love it. Okay. My favorite tea is iced Earl Grey tea. So when you cold brew a tea, you get a lot of different flavors than you would get with just using hot water. Um, some people make iced tea by just heating up the water and making tea as usual and then freezing it. But what you want to do to get the perfect iced tea is make a cold brew. So cold brew iced tea, what it does is it releases some of the sweeter notes in the tea leaves, whereas hot brewing or boiling the tea releases tannins, which has more of a bitter flavor profile. When I make my iced tea, I usually start off with water and then I add my tea bags in. Then after I have my tea bags, I put ice on top of the tea bags, close the lid, and then just spin my carafe a little bit. And then once I see that the water's kind of mixing with the tea bags, I take my glass jar and I like to put it on a windowsill. Um, I don't know why, but just in my house, it feels like you're getting sunlight into your... It's weird, but it's like sunshine in a cup. Um, so I usually leave my tea on the windowsill for about 10 to 15 minutes. Um, if I go longer than that, the tea starts to get a little stronger. And I really like the light, airy taste of a lightly brewed tea. Um... It's also much sweeter this way, so you don't need to add any sugar. Um, once you're done brewing, you just take out the bags and pour yourself a glass. There are so many amazing ways to make tea. I can't wait to try some of these recipes during our next break. What other beverages do people like in the mornings other than tea and coffee? Let's ask some of our participants. I drink honey water every morning to keep a healthy uh, diet. And I almost finish a lot of bottles like this. So I hope you also enjoy it. My morning beverage is um, black coffee and a Waffle House mug. 
<laughs> I really just enjoy taking chocolate uh, beverages and uh, that's all for, for the day because I, I usually uh, don't have much, but as long as I have my chocolate, I'm good to go. Um, I think coconut water. <laughs> nice. Why? Tell us about it. Why? <laughs> yeah, because like when I'm on the farm, like I literally got off the farm to, to come join you guys. Um, you know, it's like one of the most refreshing things, natural thing that I would get on the farm to drink um, most mornings. And it's so, you know, it really gives you that. To me, it gives you that. Um, it, 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 it refreshes you, but it also gives you like that, for me, that inspiration to just start my day the right foot, start my day with the right mind. And of uh, course, to me, it's like the best water there is, you know. Mm. Coconut water is just like really, really amazing. So, so yeah, so it really, really um, refreshes me to like start that day on a really good foot. So I do get my tea in the morning. It keeps me, keeps me going. Um, but lately, because of um, COVID, um, I've been taking some ginger. Mm. <laughs> fresh ginger, ground ginger with lemon. And that has been keeping me going um, through the morning. It gives me a sense of uh, sort of um, strength and I feel like I'm building my immunity or I'm uh, fighting whatever that may be on my way. So mm. ginger, fresh, ground ginger, lemon. We call it dawa here in Kenya. It's a very common drink where uh, you have a uh, lemon, ginger and, um, and honey. It tastes really, really good. So if uh, anybody comes to Kenya, please ask for dawa. Mm -hmm. And once in a while, depending on where you are, they'll put some vodka in there. So be, be very clear if you want <laughs> the pure dawa or the other dawa. <laughs> my uh, the morning uh, the drinks or the beverage is like mineral water. So my morning routine lately for beverages of preference and beverages of choice, um, I pretty much try to always start with a nice fresh of glass of water because I love water. And um, then I kind of alternate between what we've heard a little already, which is either some nice black coffee, sometimes decaf, sometimes calf, sometimes mixed, um, or also black tea with milk sometimes, depending on my mood. Uh, so thank you to all the growers and those along the value chain for making that happen. I'm not sure, uh, but uh, what I like to take, mine is usually thicker and heavy. Yeah, and for my morning, if I can have a yogurt, that is all, all that I need to to move the day. A oh, yogurt. really? Flavor. Yes. What, like what, do you have like a special, do you have a brand that you like or a flavor that you like that's your favorite? Yes. Um, currently on the market, uh, we have vanilla, we have strawberries, uh, we have uh, plain, but blueberries is my best. Blueberries. I think I was questioning. <laughs> of course, uh, just like uh, uh, Pierre said, <laughs> I, I love my morning beverage. I, I love hot chocolate, hot chocolate. Um, that is what I was brought up with. I wake up in the morning, this is the only thing I, will, I think about. In the afternoon, I'm thinking about it. In the evening, I'm thinking about it. When I wake up, I'm thinking about it. <laughs> what, happens, what happens to me is that they had to take out one of my tooth because of it. So I love chocolate. <laughs> Water. I don't like anything hot, you know, so I like something, you know, just warm or cold. So what has been the biggest, I think, thing for me in the morning? Water. Go ahead. Thank you so much for sharing. Why don't we take a minute to learn about some other popular morning beverages? Ancient Mayans would ground raw cacao to make a beverage called chocolate, or as we know it today, hot chocolate. Chocolate was often infused with wine, vanilla, pimiento, and chili peppers. The spices and bitter and sweetened cacao used to make chocolate gave it a much sharper taste than our sweeter contemporary versions of hot chocolate. Like the Mayans, many people prefer other drinks than coffee and tea in the morning. Some people have water infusions made with honey, fruits, herbs, and other ingredients like ginger. Other people prefer having juices and smoothies or even plain water. Some people even like to have milk or milk-based drinks like hot chocolate in the morning. When picking a morning beverage, the options are endless. Before we conclude, let's hear from some more of our participants about their favorite beverages. 
Well, first thing my day always starts with is the South Indian filter coffee. So the the coffee we drink in the south of India is is a slight variation from what it's had globally. Uh, it's kind of uh, blended with uh, chicory, so I think it, the blending ratio is something like forty or sixty. So and it's packaged as packaged and sold in India as filter coffee. And uh, you know it's kind of a ritual that every day in the night before we go to bed, my wife prepares you know uh, the filter. By the time uh, you know, by, uh, by morning the the wonderful decoction basically percolates down, capturing all the aroma and all the thickness and all the flavor of the coffee, and that coffee is then heated and kind of mixed with hot milk, and that's how we I have my filter coffee in the morning, uh, and I can't recollect of a day when I can't have a coffee and you know go. I definitely drink coffee. I am a bit of a coffee snob. I don't buy coffee from stores. I prefer to make it myself. I embarrassed to say I have three coffee machines. I take two shots, uh, some steamed milk. I have to admit, I actually buy coffee from Trader Joe's, but it is the Ethiopian uh, coffee variety. It uh, reminds me of my trips out to Ethiopia and bringing back suitcases full of coffee from that wonderful country. One of my first experiences of the Ethiopian coffee ceremony, those of you who have been through that, uh, I loved it because, you know, they roast the beans over charcoal. Uh, you know, it's a very traditional approach, but then she turned around and sort of hid behind her traditional dress, a little coffee grinder and put the beans in that and ran it through a coffee grinder. <laughs> you know, I mean, the sort of, and then put it into a mortar and pestle and then did a little, <laughs> It's quite funny. R Rwanda special. It has different flavored coffee on almost every mountain, every hill they have. Cool. Uh, it, it's really amazing. You should try it. Drink coffee cool. with gorillas, right? Some people, yeah, big tourist attraction. Rwanda. Yeah. No, I've never been there, but maybe I will. Are we working there in phase two? Ola? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, yes. right. Yeah. You, you can. There's a good coffee yeah. shop I can recommend in Gali. You can taste all kinds of varieties of coffee right there without going on the mountains. Yep. Yeah. Annie, are you a coffee drinker? I, I love the smell of coffee. I would drink it, but I can't. Um, but when I was there, I did try it. Uh, they have some amazing flavors. Good morning. My beverage of choice is coffee, and we roast the beans at home. And then I like to have it with steamed milk either skim milk or 1%. And we order our beans from roasting online and we can get beans from around the world. We currently have in the house beans from Honduras, from Burundi, from Kenya, from Ethiopia. So unfortunately, as a college student, I start my morning with a Mr. Coffee cup of coffee uh, with a little cream and sugar. But pre-COVID, I worked at a student-run coffee shop on campus, which is my pride and joy. Um, we served Compass Coffee, which was a local DC coffee roaster. And my preferred morning start was a vanilla latte. Awesome, how many pumps of vanilla? This is a really important barista question I need to know. So we make our, our vanilla syrup in-house, so it's not very sweet, which is the only reason that I used it there. Um, I usually don't get vanilla anywhere else because it's just simply too sweet, but uh, at the bridge, it's like nice. So I usually just do like a three second squirt because it's in like a squirty bottle. Thank you to everyone who joined our session. Mornings might be hard, but a good beverage can make it better. We hope you enjoy our conference as much as I enjoy drinking coffee. As you wait for the next session to begin, comment in the chat below on your, on your favorite morning beverage, recipe, or fun fact. Because I think ICT for Ag is one discipline or one area which is pretty much is evolving, right? So this is this is a science that's being made as we speak. And I feel very privileged that we as a community of people are actually defining the space 
uh, we are kind of riding this the cusp and we are kind of creating a lot of the standards and we are laying down the path of how this area is eventually going to evolve and start impacting uh, smallholder farmers in particular in a very big way and thus help the world at large address a number of the sustainable development goals. At the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, ICT for Ag is a key part of our overall strategy. We have a team called Digital Farmer Services, and uh, we see digital as a way to accelerate inclusive agricultural transformation. Um, we focus on different aspects of the digital farmer services spectrum, from ag advisory to insurance, to finance, market linkages. We also look at the broader digital agriculture ecosystem, which I think is an important part of why we're here at this conference is to have a coordinated approach to how do, how do we scale these systems? How do we reach the millions of farmers that we need to reach uh, through digital? For us, we think that to uh, use the ICT will help us also to help fowl to provide a better nutrition, better productivity, a better environment, and a better living standard for uh, small, uh, smallholder farmers and family farmers, and also uh, to better provide the technical support to FAUS members. So for the World Bank, what ICT for Ag represents is really uh, charting the course for the next, um, next years of our engagement with our clients. Um, promoting uh, digital methodologies and also disruptive agri-tech innovations, which, uh, in which we can collaborate with local innovation, uh, entrepreneurs, youth, agri-tech startups, all these people who can bring new life, new blood, uh, passion and innovation um, in how, the, how our food and agriculture system should go in the future. So, we, we look forward to connecting with you. We look forward to collaborate with you. And yeah, come and let's change the course of the system together. Hi, I'm Angela Pashayan. I'm an intern at USAID in the Inclusive Development Division under Meredith Soul. And food security to me means when we are able to have food delivered in crisis, uh, in COVID situations or other pandemics to places that look like this, the informal settlements in Africa. Resiliencia en la agricultura, creo que la entendí. Creo que ese es un tema de mucha actualidad, de mucha actualidad donde creo que cada día es de más aprendizaje porque eh, creo que la, nosotros los humanos hemos dañado la naturaleza y creo que ahora la naturaleza está cobrándonos factura. Tenemos que prepararnos mucho para hacer agricultura resiliente. Ese es un tema de mucha actualidad. What does food resilience mean to me? It means that waking up in the morning, I don't have to think about whether I'm looking for food or not. I mean, it's just there. I don't have to think about it. It's, the food is always available. Thank you. Of not worrying about food. And I really love these kinds of conversations because you see so much creativity in addressing food security around the world and how so many different areas utilize similar strategies, but also very different strategies to really respond to their specific population targets. And I think it's, it's a, very, a very sad issue, but also a very beautiful solution-based issue that a lot of people are working towards. I think it's incredible, like coalition of individuals. I think it's the capacity to have access to the aliments of the best quality and in a durable way. Ça, je pense que ça, c'est la sécurité alimentaire. Avoir accès aux aliments de meilleure qualité, n'est-ce pas, et de manière durable. Je pense que c'est ça ma compréhension de la sécurité euh, alimentaire. Merci. 
This April, we launched the USA Digital Strategy, which is applies to all of USA programs and uh, sectors and regions around the world, including agriculture. So when you have a chance, please go check out the USA Digital Strategy. And please remember to go to the topic specific community discussion boards and start your topic or engage with others. Don't forget you can also reach out to people one on one using the direct message function. Hi everybody, uh, don't forget that we have session chats where you can uh, post your questions and communicate and connect with other participants throughout the day. Hi everyone, I hope you enjoyed our first session. We heard so much about chai, coffee, tea, and all the morning beverages. Just to show everyone what I will be consuming over the next 15 hours, this is all cold brew coffee. So now it's time to head to the first keynote session. And to do this, what you're gonna do on your web browser is click back into your agenda. It'll be on the left-hand main navigation panel. Click back in and then head to keynote one. If you're on the mobile app, same thing. You're going to click back into your agenda and then make sure to head to the next session. And this will be the process throughout the next 15 hours. Uh, if you have any questions, reach out to our organizers. We'll be sure to help you get through Whova and get to the sessions. Head over to Keynote. We'll see you soon.